Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today I want to talk a little bit about net installers, and uh, we want to use as a jumping point an article that just came out as uh, the Ubuntu dev team is considering a net installer for Ubuntu. So I want to talk about what a net installer is. We'll cover the article briefly. And I think this is a really cool idea, and I think that if a distribution like Ubuntu comes up with an idea like this, it might get other people thinking about such things as well. And so let's go ahead and uh, jump on over to the article here. And so uh, from OMG Ubuntu, Ubuntu's devs uh, working on a new 140 megabyte mini ISO installer. Now the headline is not like, um, uh, it's not completely factual. They're not actually working on it right now. They're discussing it right now. Um, so here, well, not there. Here is the thread of uh, where the discussion came from. So before we get through this thread, let's go ahead and talk about what is a net installer if you are new to Linux. So if you go to download your favorite Linux distribution, you might see a variety of different download options. Those could be if you're doing like Debian, you have a full, um, you know, you have an ARM, you have an Intel, you might have a 32-bit, you might have a 64-bit. So you need to know a little bit more about your computer to know which exact one of those to download. Now, one of the options you might see in several um, several installers will have it. Debian has a net installer. The Arch main Arch uh, in, um, distribution is generally a net installer. So what these are is a minimal amount of information needed to get you into a bootable system. And then what it does is you configure all of the options that you want. And then once you hit install, it's going to go online and download everything else you need. So instead of like a typical, either a live key or something else where you can run the distribution on a USB drive without installing it, which has to download everything required for the distribution to run, then what we have is a very small distribution. It's going to get you some type of installer. Usually it's going to be some command line type or uh, a similar install system like that, maybe just something very bare bone minimal with a GUI uh, that runs an installer. It's going to be a very small size to download initially. And then you take this and you put it booted into your system. Now you cannot run the distribution on it to test that way, but if you don't need to test it, you just need to download it. It makes a little bit more sense to download that and then you just need to make sure that you have a good internet connection where you are installing. So um, there's a few different places where your network connectivity might cause you to want to do that, but eh, whatever. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to the uh, list here. So apparently at some point in time, there was an unofficial, unsupported net installer for Ubuntu that hadn't been updated for a long time. But a number of people actually used by uh, used it. Uh, in fact, um, the author here, which is Aaron uh, Rainbolt, uh, says, I've seen more than one person annoyed by the fact that the mini ISO net installer is no more. It was never officially supported, but apparently people got used to it. He throws on a Mastodon thread and the, re the uh, response was fairly positive. So there's actually been a lot of back and forth with the various Ubuntu install uh, developers here talking about, should we do this? So what they're looking at doing doing is a very small, you know, like the article said, about 140 megabyte in size, and it's going to be an official downloader for Ubuntu. So you download the net installer, put that onto your drive, and then not only can you install the Ubuntu, you can install any of the Ubuntu flavors. So any of the official, officially supported Ubuntu flavors. So your Ubuntu Budgie, your Ubuntu Mate, your... Um, uh, your uh, new Ubuntu Unity respin, or hey, even your Red Star OS, if you'd like to do that. Is that the, no, it's the Ubuntu Kylin, I think is the uh, the Chinese one. Um, sorry, I can't say I've used it uh, personally. One well, of the only Ubuntu distros I haven't tried. Should we try it someday? Um, get prepared for our, our real owners in this country. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, what he writes in here is my idea to either write my own installer or use a customized version of the Debian net installer and package it as an official flavor. So this will be one of the flavors that's a little bit different. So 
basically they would say, okay, the home is on the is on the flavor page, so we don't have to, you know, retool a lot of other weird stuff in the background to make it happen. That's a, a good uh, time saving effort of them. And um, they said it'd be capable of installing any supported version of any official flavor of Ubuntu. The flavor would be uh, would be able to be held in a very small ISO file, uh, such as uh, CD sized, which is under 800 megabytes, roughly. 740, I think, up to 800 uh, megabytes is uh, what a CD size holds. Well, that's a DVD size. I think a CD can do like 450 megabytes. Um, it would download and install all of the packages that make up the Ubuntu system at runtime, allowing the user to install Ubuntu or any desired flavor thereof using a single installation medium rather than having to flash an ISO every time they want to do a drive install of a different flavor. All right, so he would eventually aim to make it an official flavor of Ubuntu, but it would differ from all others in these critical ways. It would be the first flavor that could not be installed into a target system by itself. It would be the first flavor that could install other flavors onto a uh, target system by design. It would be the first flavor that could install versions of Ubuntu other than the one it is based on, and it would have a different installer than any other flavor of Ubuntu, most likely, and would not be able to make use of the existing official installers in any meaningful way without large changes to one of them. So they're talking about a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, time going back and forth, but is this a good option? I know that when I'm not testing a distro out, I don't care for a live CD. I like to actually just grab the net installer. The biggest advantage you have is since it downloads every component of the distribution during install, you don't have to worry about downloading a net installer, having that as the you know official. So let's just say you download the live key for Ubuntu, for example, you know, four months after it was released. Well, that live key is essentially the same as it was on day one, but you're gonna have a pile of updates. Think buying a Windows computer from Best Buy, bringing it home, and not being able to use it for the first day as it pushes Windows updates. So what the net installer has as a major advantage is on, on the install, it is downloading all of the individual components that you need at the time of install, which means no system updates once you get the system up and running. And uh, this type of thing makes uh, makes quite a bit of sense for me. And so as we're looking at uh, Endeavor OS, I usually grab that. They kind of have a split option. Um, I think Fedora has a net installer in addition to other kinds as well. So there's a lot of distributions that already support the idea of a net installer. And overall, I think that the net installer is a very good approach for distributing a Linux distribution. And honestly, I like this. Uh, we, we did enough critical articles of Ubuntu last week. Let's show Ubuntu a little bit of love for the Linux community this week and say, yeah, this is actually a pretty cool idea. And I would like it as a person that regularly wants to uh, wants to run distro reviews. I like the fact I have to download that one time. And then of course, um, each time I, I, uh, use that same, uh, same file until it's updated, I'm going to get whatever the latest version with all of the updates I'm going to get for each of the, uh, Ubuntu flavors that I wish to try. So I think overall in the long run, that's a really good option. Uh, so that's, uh, that's kind of cool. So I just kind of weigh in on that and and uh, just talk briefly about net installers, what are they, and uh, how they would actually help us uh, to install Linux distributions a little bit better. Uh, also very useful if you have uh, you know, multiple different computers in your family, you're using Ubuntu, and each of you different, like different spins, download one installer, and then you easily use that to deploy uh, the same uh, build across the, um, uh, all the rest of the computers. So there is, uh, there's my thought there is what Ubuntu is up to. Uh, this one's actually one of the good moves that they're making, um, which is uh, a nice difference. With that, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a look over at the links on the website, switch to linux.com. We do have our affiliates over there, support links over there, and all the other things over there. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. -M. 
or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.